Hopefully now your project is at the same stage as mine. So you've got all your animations, you've got your tile map laid out and we're ready to create the map point. So let's jump into the scripts, create a new C sharp script and we call this map point. And once that's finished compiling, we'll open it up in Visual Studio. So the first set of variables we're going to need are our waypoints. So we've got map point up and then map point right, down and left. It's done like this because if we put them all together, uh, waypoints will come up in between each of these waypoints. But if we just use one, then we can then go under and continue uh, with our other map points. Okay, so the next set of variables we're going to need are our scene options. Here we've got a serialized uh, field uh, for, an in, for our level index. And then we want to hide in the expector a public string scene to load. Then we've got a text area uh, which is giving us a little uh, rectangle for two lines of uh, the public string level name. So this would be the level name that appears in the little white text box. Okay, now we need our waypoint options. Again, we're going to hide an inspector. A public ball is locked. And then we've got a public ball is level, a public ball is corner, and a public ball is warp point. Okay. Now we've got our warp point options. So we've got a public ball for auto warp, uh, a public ball for has warped, and we want to hide that in an inspector. And then we want a map point, again, which is public. We we'll call that warp point. This is where we want to warp to. Then we've got our variables for our image options. So we've got a serialized field for a sprite, uh, unlock sprite, and one for a lock sprite. And we we'll set them both to null as default. And the final set of variables we're going to need are our level UI objects. So we need to use TM Pro or Unity Engine UI if you're using the standard text field. So we've got our text mess Pro object for our level text and we've got a game object, our level panel. And we've also got a private reference to our sprite renderer and we serialize these two just so we can set them in the inspector. Okay, so that are, that's all the variables you're going to need. So if I can zoom in a little bit more for you, if you want to pause the video, uh, take two seconds, make sure you've got all of that uh, typed out correctly. Then we'll get ready on to the Unity methods. Okay, we'll jump down into Start. And the first thing we want to do is get the Sprite Renderer. So it's Get Component in Children, because the Sprite Renderer is a child of this uh, map point. And then we're going to hide the level uh, panel image, so we're going to check if it's not null, and if it's not null, we're going to then set it to false. We then need an if else statement. Okay, we're going to first of all we check if it's not a level or or a warp point. We're going to set the sprite renderer image to null, so if not is level and not is warp point. But we're going to check if it's locked and the lock sprite isn't null. We'll set the sprite renderer to the lock sprite. 
else we're going to set the sprite render a sprite to null okay so i'll just leave you that there for a second and then in the else statement down here the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if it's a level and we're going to set the status so we're going to get the scene to load so we're going to go data manager instance game data lock levels level index scene to load and again we get the is lock status of the level uh, by going to the data manager and uh, grabbing the level index and whether or not it's locked or not okay so if you just want to pause and grab that quickly before i paste this extra piece of coding okay next then we're going to check if the level is locked we're going to check if uh, the sprite renderer isn't null and if it's locked we set the sprite renderer sprite to the locked sprite else we set the sprite renderer sprite to the unlocked sprite we don't need update at all but we do need on trigger enter and on trigger exit 2d so we have void on trigger enter 2d and then if collision tag equals player and void on trigger exit 2d and then again if collision tag equals player okay on the on trigger enter first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if it's locked and if it is locked we set the level panel uh, active status to true and then we set the level text to level locked okay then we want an else statement and if this is for the is locked so if it's locked we're gonna set the level to locked if not we we'll activate the panel and we we'll set the level text uh, to the level name uh, which will be in the little text box that we get up on the map point when we look at the map point this is where you'll set any other panels and stuff like that and any text related to those panels so coins leaves secret items whatever you want uh, you'd set all the panels active and this active in uh, the on trigger enter and finally for the map point we go to the on trigger exit we want to hide the level panel so we check first of all if it's not null if it's not null we set it active to false we want to reset the has warped ball to false and then we just clear the level text you can now save that uh, we go back into unity once that's compiled We can go to our prefabs. Uh, we can open up the map point. And we can now attach uh, the map point script to it. Now you can see here we've got our multi line box for our level name. And we've got all of our options for our sprites and everything like that. So that's basically the map point done. And uh, if you've got your prefab brush also up to paint the map points in we're all ready to go so you can go down now and start painting in the map points so if we select our map point layer go down and select our map point brush and click paint we can now paint in our waypoints on our map and then we can go in and uh, configure each of these waypoints individually to get the player to move around the map. So I'll wrap this lesson up now to keep time short.
we'll look at configuring the map points in the next lesson and we'll hook all of those together and then we'll look at doing the player controller. So hopefully I'll see you in the next lesson.